hello guys and welcome back to the channel i'm just saying my piece and this will be an impromptu really an impromptu episode of walk and talk um i just came around here to visit someone and uh this is the road that we used to walk on when I was a child to go to Coley Mountain Primary School. Uh, this area is called Endeavor and going toward this area here, that is going toward Coley Mountain. Now, as a kid, there was no real road right here. This was essentially a dirt track and we used to actually run on this road barefooted we came to school barefooted back then just to show you how old i was i am and yeah we would walk run and walk along these roads to school every morning back then school would begin at nine o'clock because you know kids had to get up back then and go and tie out the goat and get the milk from the farmer somewhere and all of that sort of thing so that's how it used to be back then and i kid you not this is a jamaican yellow plum tree and this plum tree was here when i was a kid and to give you an idea of what they look like this is what the plums look like and when they are ripe they are going to be nice and yellow for all you jamaicans i'm sure you all know what these taste like and how you even if they didn't belong to you as a kid you are going to pick them anyway that there's a mango tree over there and that is somebody's yam plantation and so that's how it was and this is where we used to walk hi dear how you do uh, and as you can see the area is pretty nice uh, nice farmland lots of fruit trees everywhere and most of these houses were here well some of them were a little smaller than they are now but they were all here and this is a pretty nice area and as you can see one kid down there wearing the Coley Mountain uniform and yep that's what it is Here. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Good. I should tell you this when we were kids uh, there was no electricity back then so things have come a long way as I said this is the road to Coley Mountain Primary School back then by the way it was also it was actually called Coley Mountain All Age um, and the it went up to grade 9 back then when my mom was a kid it actually went up to grade 11 that's way back as you can see over here people got their little farms going here and um it is a by the way uh early evening sometime after five o'clock and the sun is sort of just you know painting the hills a nice golden glow as you can see and yeah i'm not going to walk very far but just to give you an idea of what this area is as we're going up here we are in fact getting out of Endeavour 
and getting into Koli Mountain. And, and to be honest, apart from the road being more or less, more or less paved, things haven't changed at all. And, and that is more than 40 something years ago. Yeah. But I absolutely love this area. And for all my viewers who are familiar with this area and for some who are from here, because I know there are a few of you. Um, yeah, just a bit of nostalgia. So you remember where you're from. And yes, let's identify a little bit. This is a Nisberry tree. And these beautiful multicolored flowers, well, they're shrubbery really. They are called crotons and they come in multicolors. As you can see, here's another set over here. And most of the, <coughs> excuse me, most of the older people used them as flowers and this was the pretty much go to shrubbery that everyone planted at their um in their driveways and stuff like that so if you see some of these flowers or shrubbery along anyone's house you know it's either uh, someone who is older who lives there or they have been there for a very long time and I can tell you that these shrubberies have been there since I was a kid going to school I kid you not so here's another one on this side right here and as you can see that's uh, somebody's private driveway And here they are. They can be very, very beautiful when they're nicely cut down and, you know, manicured and so on. So, we're just going to go up this hill. This house, by the way, has been there since I was a kid. And we have spoken about, about tombs before, have we? Uh, yes. So as you can see here, there are lots of tombs and they sit, they sit right in the front yard. And this used to be a feature of many, many older houses. Uh, I am not sure, as I said before, whether or not this was uh, some sort of a status symbol or something. But many older houses had the tombs sitting right at the front. And it is perfectly legal or was perfectly legal back then to simply have a burial plot on your own land the government is discouraging that sort of thing these days but you can still apply for a permit and if it's in an area where the government considers it considers it to be appropriate you will still be granted the permit to bury someone there although the one that we have looked at just now I am almost certain that the government will not grant any more permits for any more tombs in that area, any more burials in that area. This is a little hill that we're climbing and you will probably notice me getting out of breath as I go because I am unfit and not young anymore. At least that is my excuse. <laughs> um, The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed these walls here. They are made of packed stone. And let's take a closer look at them. They have been here for upwards of 150 years because back then everybody used these to, as property markings. can see here even the government did back then so and one of these properly packed walls 
they can last for hundreds of years in fact in another video i will take you down to a place close by called freetown where the walls have been there since slavery and you will see that they are just as strong now as they have always been and hi dear how are you <laughs> and there was no mortar used in them now this is the more modern version of that sort of thing and i guarantee you that without maintenance this will go before this so we are up the hill and i don't seem to be that much out of breath so it would seem that the whole little bit of walking around in jamaica has done me some good and i'm my fitness level is increasing so I think I'll go down to that little level there where you see that car is coming from and yes madame and then we will talk a little bit about this corner here um, and if I feel like the school is just around the corner <laughs> For you Jamaicans <laughs> who know what that means. Ah, uh, yeah. And for you non Jamaicans, that's an inside joke. Okay, let me explain it. Um, in Jamaica, when you ask somebody to give you directions, the first thing they'll tell you is that it's just around the corner. And as a foreigner, you will take that literally. Don't. What it means is that. Um, it may be around the next corner or it may be around the next 15 to 20 corners But it's not a lie. It is literally around the corner which corner is what we did not say But yeah, that's the way it is right here So an inside joke Okay, so the enterprise is everywhere and Everybody is trying a thing And we have found a little doggy. Hello, little fellow. What happened to you? Were you in a fight? I guess he was. Okay, you'll be all right. Don't worry about it. So we are going around the corner. And as I mentioned, it is mid to late evening and you know, you know how it is, the sun gets to be low in the sky and you get this beautiful view here. <coughs> Let's talk about this black jump for a bit. Um, in central Manchester and many other parts of the island, there really is no running water. Uh, ZJ or 2J Killer, um, I guess that's his way of marking his water tank. But yes, it is a water tank. And uh, if you take a, let me just zoom in a little bit and show you. There is also another drum on top of the roof of that house, as you can see in the background there. And how this is done is that the water off that roof is piped into this drum or there's a water truck that comes around and will you can buy water from that truck and uh, pump it into this drum at which point the these residents will then pump it into the drum that is on top of the roof and then the entire house is gravity fed by water and again this is because many areas such as these do not have a running water 
and of such we have to provide our own uh, domestic supply in whatever ways we can and uh, this is one of the ways the other way of course is to have an in-ground tank so let us give you a little view of the area around here and there are many people living around here and of course someone over here is setting up a nice uh, a small house here's an orange tree and a bunch of other trees so let us keep on walking um as i said it's almost around the corner to the school i am going to just stop at the bottom of the school and here are some tykes uh, and this is in fact a school day so here are some little tykes coming from school they do wear uniforms here but some of the smaller ones don't the little babies sometimes they don't wear uniform nice view over the wall a good 25 30 feet drop and somebody else is also making another nice house lots of beautiful farmland over there and beautiful hills as well oh i should show you this <coughs> you are going to see along many many places in jamaica these holes cut out into the rock these are not technically caves what they are are marl holes marl is the local terminology for limestone and uh, people dig these well this particular limestone quarry was dug when this road was being built and uh, the limestone was taken out to use on this road now let me give you show you what limestone is because by coincidence there just happened to be a load of limestone that has been dropped right here beside the road because it would appear someone is making a house on top here and of course these are hollow block because in Jamaica we do use hollow block construction so you can see what hollow blocks are this is what they look like these are <coughs> 16 by six by eight and that is the standard block that is used in jamaica for housing construction and we just happen to be here and since as basically this is a construction channel you have just gotten an impromptu um, lesson on hollow blocks as you can see this is what they look like right here and this is what they look like on the side and there are small companies that make these blocks and you can buy them uh, by the hundred um, here we are this this is marl and that is what would have been dug out of a quarry such as this big quarry here because this was also part of a quarry at the point when this road was being built and apart and that hole over there as well so let us continue on our little walk and of course there is some infrastructure around as you can see so and this may be taking quite a while but um when we were kids this would have been three or four minutes from when I started to up to the school up there where you can I don't know if you can see that lamp post up the top there and that's pretty much where we are And again, in the distance, you can see the, that beautiful pink and blue. You can barely see it. So let me sort of try to zoom in a little bit on it. And you can have a look. And those 
are actually tombs. That again is somebody's uh, burial plot. Um, this one being a bit off the road, it may still be granted permission to be used. But uh, as I said, the one that was right beside the road, that may, I hardly think the government will allow any more burial right there. But as you can see, um, there is a thing here in Jamaica and people tend to, um, it's, it tends to be a, a source of pride to have your burial plot being nicely done and all that. Plus, you know, it does, um, I guess, pay homage to your ancestors. And again, beautiful farmland. And on the hill up there is Coley Mountain All Age. That would be where I went to school as a kid. Way up there. Well, it really is not that far. And even though the roads are not the best, you can, as you can see, um, our Jamaican drivers are not <clears throat> overly encumbered by that fact. Putting it nicely, of course. Let's take a look at this little thing for a bit. Um, I think this plant is called a sisal. Now, don't quote me on that because I am not 100% sure of the name. But what I do know is that back in the day when I was a kid, my grandfather and all the older people used this plant to make a rope. And how it would be done is very simple. They would take the plant, they would take these long leaves of the plant, and while it was green, they would essentially crush them in the direction that the plant grows to get rid of the soft section of it. Then they would soak it in water for weeks and end to get rid of it until it, it teases out into these long strands, which they would then dry in the sun until they were almost completely dry at which point they would hang them up until they had a lot of them. They would then uh, twirl them together and uh, use those long fibers to make rope. And as I understand it, they, these ropes were almost indestructible. Of course, nowadays nobody does that. You know, oil, plastic fibers and nylon rope and all that stuff. And as usual, there will be kids coming from school. Hi. Uh, when I was a kid, this was the only shop around this area for miles. And for those who may remember, a gentleman called Mr. Morgan used to operate this shop and he was the only person in this area who had a car. So this car was the de facto community taxi or emergency uh, ambulance whenever people were sick. And of course people would come from miles around and I mean that literally miles around. 
everywhere that you can look at here, miles around, to come to this gentleman here, Mr. Morgan, whenever someone was sick to take them to the hospital. And it didn't matter night, day, whether or not it was raining or there was a, well, we don't have snow here, but you know what I mean. Regardless of the climatic conditions, he was always ready to make that emergency run. So, Mr. Morgan, rest in peace. And we come to the little square and where we have been trying to get to for so long. And this is my alma mater. Holy Mountain Primary and now Infant School. Uh, there you go. And they do have a dress code and the rules of conduct. So here we go. And of course, you go up this long road here. And that is Coley Mountain School. Now let me just take a quick walk up partway to show you the school because I had no intention of actually coming up here. But now that I am here, I think I am obliged to show you where I went to school. And yes, these are all mango trees and they are bearing. And I can assure you that as kids, um, we used to stone those mangoes mercilessly. There you are, all those stones would be halfway over the road. And of course the teachers would not be pleased and as kids we would try to do it discreetly now can you imagine trying to throw a stone on a tree discreetly yeah but we were kids so that was that was our thought process now as you can see the school itself is essentially a one long building and it's divided internally and back in the day when i came to this school there were nine classrooms as i said grade one to nine these days it goes only up to grade seven i believe and there is also an infant school here so this here is the famous or at least in my mind coley mountain primary all age back then so now you can see and that ladies and gentlemen was our water tank that is where generations of kids quench their thirst and um and made mud balls and forced their parents to wash their clothes overnight so yeah that little section there let me see if i can zoom in on it that is your drinking fountain so what we used to do, there used to be four or five, maybe six pipes, I can't remember, taps for you North Americans. And you would turn them on, stick your head underneath it and drink. And um, there was no COVID and nobody thought about hygiene. And we are all still alive. <laughs> so there you go. And this is Coley Mountain Primary and uh, infant school and um, here are some students now let me give you a little treat for all of you who that's a donkey hello how are you good And it seems to be a very curious donkey. Hello, big fella. What's up? Yep. And quite frankly, this is a 
for those who do not know, this donkey is a little bigger than what donkeys normally are, the size donkeys normally are. But yeah, he's just grazing along. He don't care about nothing. Do you? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I was about to sign off, but I, I would be remiss if I did without showing you the church. Back when I went to school, this church here was in fact closely associated with the school and this is where we would do our harvest. Um, uh, at the moment I cannot recall what denomination this church is. It may be a Catholic church, but I'm not 100% sure. But this building has been there for at least 200 years, the church in the background. The building in the foreground um, is much newer. It is much newer, but um, yeah, the church has been there for quite a while. As you can see, it's of stone construction and it is quite robust. It's actually beautiful inside, by the way. I've been in there many, many, many times as a kid. So again, guys, thanks for watching. This has been another episode of Walk and Talk. And this one was from a little bit into Endeavor and a little bit into Koli Mountain. And we ended this one at my alma mater, Koli Mountain Primary and Infant School. And by the way, they could do with your help. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos. And you all, as usual, have a great day.